Hello everybody. In today's video, I will show you how to install Visual Studio Code, VS Code, on your system and how to program ABAP code with it. VS Code also has some disadvantages for ABAP developers, which I will discuss at the end of my video. To download Visual Studio Code, we open a browser and type here in the address bar uh, VS code download. Then we see some links. The first link is the right one, download Visual Studio Code. We click on it and then depending on the operating system, we click on the install file. In my case, I use a Windows and I download the Windows installation file. So I save this locally to my computer. After that, I open the Explorer window and do a double click on the installation file. Then I accept the license agreement and click on continue. Then I have some checkboxes. I leave this default and then I click on the button install. So then the installation is running. And after the installation, we start Visual Studio Code. So let's close some windows here to have a better view. So let's zoom in a little bit. Appearance and zoom in. That you have a, that's a better view. Okay, after that, we can uh, close the, the tabs, release notes and welcome, the welcome window. And we click on the icon extensions. And here we type in ABAP to search for the ABAP extensions. And here we see different ABAP extensions and we install the ABAP remote file system. Click on install. Then you see some details and dependencies. So with this uh, extension, we are able to program directly on the server. We see some dependencies, some other extensions are installed as well. Then we clicked on the settings, extension settings. And now we have to add the settings.json file. And here we uh, type in the, the settings of, the, of our SAP system we want to connect. So I paste a prepared code here. And I provide this code in the video description for you. Okay, before we connect to the SAP system, we open the SAP system in the SAP GUI because we have, we have to check some uh, settings. We open the um, service with the transaction uh, SICF and we search for the service name ADT underscore SRV, SRV. So click on the button and we check if the service is activated. In my case, it's activated. If not, you have to activate the service. Then click on test service. And here, this is a important information for us. It's the, the host name and the port. So in my case, the host name and the port is 50,000 because it's an A4H system. If you have an NPL system, the port is 8,000, I think. So you have to copy this. And after you click on the button, a, a browser window should open with some XML information. And if you see that, your system is ready for connection. So we close this and we go back to the settings.json file. Then we uh, type in the system 
the name of the system. In my case, it's an A4H system. Then we paste the, the domain and the port, the host name and the port. We provide the username, password, client and language. So you can connect the system with HTTPS as well. You have only to change the port. You have to use the HTTPS port. So then we save this uh, settings file. We close the tabs. Then we press the button F1 on the keyboard. And we type here in the input field or we type here. We pick here the connect to the ABAP system and you see down below here that the uh, ABAP remote file system added one folder to the workspace. So this is the extension. Here we see the transport requests and we click here button on the explorer and we see that temp package and the all packages from a connected SAP system. So let's scroll down to the set examples package. I have here some programs, so let's open a program so you can see the formatted code. And here we are. So it looks really good. Much colors are used, so it's really nice to code here. Then if you click on the on the command or variable, you see where this variable is used in the code. The ABAP help is working, the documentation is working. So if we check the autocomplete code completion works. Okay, so and if we want to create an object, we click right click on the package, then ABAP create object and let's create a program here. Then we type in the name of the program. So for example, set underscore VS code test, then enter, then we have to enter the description and then the transport request we want to add this program. Okay, and here we are. Here we see the, the source code of the new program and now we can start to code. So for example, let's write a short hello world program. And on the top right, you see the activation icon if you click on this icon, a pretty print is performed before. So pretty print and activate with one click. So it's pretty nice. Okay, so if we click on the extension, we see the open oh, the transports, the locked objects in the transport. We see the last the last dumps. So let's click on one dump. Okay, this was a dump from a program which I have created before. Okay, so let's close these tabs and the next thing here on the right side, you see a nice overview of the program and where you are in the code. And now let's check if the if the program is uh, visible in the transaction SE80 as well. So let's open this. And here we are. The program is here. And you see the created code in Visual Studio Code is in the sub GUI as well. Yes, um, but there are some disadvantages. You can't run ABAP code in Visual Studio. No programs, no methods, no function modules. You cannot debug ABAP code and you can't create and transport request. You only can use uh, already created transport requests.
the advantages are the IDE presents the code very nicely and it is fun to coding with it. Uh, creating object is fast and easy and there are many extensions to install, for example, uh, for CDS highlighting. Yes, that was it already. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Also write something in the comments. I always like to read them. Take care and see you on the next video.